We address the problem of estimating 3D human pose from corresponding 2D joint locations in an image. We propose pose condition joint angle limits to solve this problem. The problem of estimating 3D pose from a single image is inherently ill-posed and there exist several plausible 3D poses, all resulting in the same image observations. This shows that no generic prior information about static body pose is sufficient to guarantee a correct 3D pose. Here, we seek the most probable, valid, 3D human pose. Most previous priors are either not general enough for the diverse nature of human poses, or not restrictive enough to avoid invalid 3D poses. We propose a physically motivated prior that only allows anthropometrically valid poses and restricts the ones that are invalid. We use joint angle limits to decide whether two connected bones are valid or not. However, it is established in biomechanics that there are dependencies in joint angle limits between certain pairs of bones. For example, how much one can flex one's arm depends on whether it is in front or behind the back, as you can see from the video. Medical textbooks only provide joint angle limits in a few positions, and the complete configuration of pose-dependent joint angle limits for the full body is unknown. We found that existing mocap datasets, like the CMU dataset, are insufficient to learn true joint angle limits, in particular the limits that are pose-dependent. Therefore, we captured a new dataset of human motions that includes an extensive variety of stretching poses performed by trained athletes and gymnasts. Here, we show a few sample images of our motion capture. From this data, we found the skeleton of the actor and learned joint angle limits. For this purpose, we first find local coordinates of all the bones. The local coordinate system represents the bone with respect to its parent and is independent of the pose of the rest of the body. Here on the right, the black dots show the 3D positions of the right elbow in the training set, in the local coordinate system. On the left you see the occupancy matrix in azimuthal and polar angles. The green area represents valid poses, whereas sky blue represents invalid ones. As you can see in the middle, moving around in the green area gives a valid 3D pose for the elbow. Moving out of this makes the corresponding pose invalid. The joint angle limits for the right wrist are conditioned on the position of the right elbow. We observe that for a given location of the elbow, the wrist can only lie on a hemisphere or even a smaller part of it, as shown here on the bottom right. To exploit this constraint, we find a half space defined by a separating plane. We project the local 3D coordinates of the wrist, shown here as a black dots, on the separating plane for the given location of the elbow. Then, we found a bounding box enclosing the planar projections, shown on the bottom left. The green patch on the bottom right defines the joint angle limits for the wrist, for a given location of the elbow. The patch is defined as the region on the sphere which lies in the half space and whose 2D projection on the separating plane lies inside the bounding box. As you can see in the bottom middle, moving around in the green area gives a valid 3D pose for the wrist, whereas moving out of this planar patch makes the pose invalid. Moving out of the half space shown in the bottom right also makes the pose invalid. For different positions of the elbow, the joint angle limit changes for the wrist. Here, you can see the joint angle limits for the right ankle, conditioned on the position of the right knee. Again, you can see that the joint angle limits are different for different positions of the knee. In the top middle, you can see the poses corresponding to the four corners of the planar patch. We apply the pose-dependent joint angle limits for 3D pose estimation from 2D joint locations. Here you see our 3D pose estimation results from manual joint annotations. The only input to our method is the 2D joint locations, and no image information is used for 3D pose estimation. For this input data, since there may be multiple valid 3D pose hypotheses, the output 3D pose may not always be correct. We also tested our method on a recent part-based detector. Our method is able to handle significant noise in the part-based detections.
the noise also includes the flipping of the left and right limbs as you can see in the video. Our method is also able to enforce joint angle limits, even if the 2D part detections do not have a corresponding valid 3D interpretation. The dataset, the learned human pose prior and the source of 2D to 3D pose estimation algorithm are all available on our website.